why now? Uh, we, some of it is uh, that uh, sanctions were hurting, um, but that wasn't all of it because Utant Meru used to argue a few years ago that, in fact, um, the sanctions were only driving the Burmese into the arms of China uh, more than anything else, and that they were doing just fine because the Chinese and the Thais to some degree, and I don't want to offend anybody who's Thai here, but we, those of us who live there know, are also good at corruption and bribery. And so uh, they had um, um, you know, a situation where, uh, where there was a genuine debate. There's always a debate in this country about whether sanctions are a good thing or not and why they work or don't, just as there is a debate about how high up you put human rights in dealing with a country that has big, big human rights problems. But you know, as early as 1977, according to a really terrific Thai journalist who's been watching this, he said that um, as early as that time, the Burmese were saying obliquely in meetings at ASEAN that um, they were concerned about the other side, meaning um, China, that they were looking for better ties with the West. They didn't want to be driven into the other side. So, he, his idea was that this just took them a while to figure out how to do it. Now, one of the people who, several of the people who broke this down, um, initially, uh, Ban Ki-moon, as Secretary General, went after Cyclone Nargis when nobody was allowed, and God, I don't know that, when nobody was allowed to come and give humanitarian aid to the Burmese who were, who were I mean, they were dying in tens of thousands, I think 180,000. Some people say 200,000 people died in this cyclone in the Irrawaddy Delta. He was, um, and so the human rights group said to Ban Ki-moon, don't go, don't reward them. But he, his, his feeling was if you want them to come out of their shell and be sensible, you got to be there. You can't, so he had to negotiate. He had to promise them he would not see Aung San Suu Kyi, the Secretary General of the UN. And he, he went and, um, he found them backed into a corner. He found them paranoid about the outside world. Some of these generals were simply frozen um, in the sense that even doctors and nurses to them or humanitarian food re relief was somehow a fifth column. This was 2008, so you see they had seen the Americans in action in other little places like Iraq and Afghanistan, and they, they, really, they really, I apparently thought that they were in, in real danger of being invaded. It didn't help that Bernard Kushner was then uh, Foreign Minister of France, and he suggested that they just sail the warships in and take the food and you know let the chips fall. It didn't happen. Anyway, in the end, Ban Ki Moon was able to negotiate a, a, a way that they could bring in things through Thailand, through a Thai military base, so that you know there were generals in charge everywhere, and um, it, it seemed to have worked. He thought Ban Ki Moon thinks that uh, it helped. He's not taking credit for this all, but it, he it helped to let them see that the outside world was maybe not so dangerous uh, just across the board. Anyway, um, in that first trip to uh, Rangoon, Ban Ki-moon met uh, Tian Sen, who's now the president. He was a sidekick to Tan Shui, who was a particularly unpleasant general. And um, he, he sensed, he says, that this man was more moderate and possibly, uh, possibly a little bit of a hope. He was, Tian Sen was then prime minister. Um, he, Aung San Suu Kyi was, of course, in, uh, under house arrest a lot of this time. She wasn't a major figure um, until uh, really 2011, I mean, in, in public uh, political life. Um, she, her party had won the election in 1990, uh, a national election, and she was simply not allowed to take office, and the whole election was simply thrown out. Um, but I think not to be underestimated ever is the Obama administration's cautious approach and the kind of human-to-human -human contacts that Hillary Clinton and, and Obama himself tried to build up uh, to starting in the fall of 2010 because that's when they had a, a sham parliamentary election, but nonetheless an election. And so the U.S. could start having a slight change in its attitude toward, toward the Burmese. And they, they, they came up with a sort of plan like, you know, you move and then we move, you move, we move. And eventually they could get to the point where he felt that uh, Hillary Clinton could go to Burma, which for them was enormous. And then of course they saw her and Aung San Suu Kyi get along so well. Um, just leave it to the women, right? 